I'm Seamless, and today I'm going to show you how to take ZGE and light this stick on fire. Boop. Ah, isn't that something? Yeah, so ZGE has in it the stuff necessary to do this kind of effect, which is something to kind of grab a color of a thing, this being a drumstick I taped blue, and an ability to turn that into a mask, which you can then use to do a bunch of stuff with. And then things that you can do to that stuff to make other things happen, isn't this kind of a stellar deal. And you can kind of tell a little bit some of the limitations we experience and some of what's going on. We can see how other stuff's like kind of on fire a little bit. And that's cause they contain them in them the things that were identified to make this real. Also worth noting that this is happening in real time. Uh, this isn't a render that I made in ZG to show you and play. This is actually happening in FL Studio to my webcam footage right now and being recorded by XSplit live. And this effect is being generated it's happening. This is what's happening right now. <laughs> All right, let's, let's have a look. Uh, I wonder if I could do both. Just show, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. You need to see me. Do you need to see this? All right. So what's happening here? A lot of work to transform this original webcam footage into something that can be grabbed as information for like placement of effects like this. And that's called, those are, that's called masks, masks. It's essentially a side chaining, right? Like we're using it to side chain information to do like a thing too. So let's, I'm hoping I can just disable this in sequence and it won't like destroy things. What you saw me engage here was uh, the kind of blending mode that you do when you have all your stuff together. In this case, I have, I have the effect isolated and just the original footage and I'm overlaying the effect on the original footage. So normal blending there's just, you can kind of alpha on and off. So here's the effect just as it is. And then here's just the footage. And then there's a bunch of options in terms of how it can be blended. This one's additive. It's the most kind of, it's called, this is add mode. Like you've heard, may have heard this referred to as, and this is just a fix, the most, one of the most basic kinds of things and that works out, but there's way cooler things we can be doing. Like, look at this. This one is like revealing the footage and it's colored according to what's in it. And like this one, especially, oh, like it actually even kind of lights me up a little bit. So like my eyes, like have a little bit of reflecting in there and like, and the kind of negative -y. Uh, where's the actual one? Now, this one looks like my room's actually on fire. Like, it looks like in a room that's on fire. Like, it's a little bit strange to me, personally, how easy it is to get here. Um, Darken is pretty great. Like, that's that might have been one of the ones I was thinking of. I think I'm looking for color dodge. Oh, there it is. It actually kind of lights stuff up. And that's not even, like, I put bloom on, but I didn't exactly totally think it would just do that as, like, a result. And I, uh, now that I've done it, I kinda, it kind of makes sense as to why, but um, anyway, the actual way this is meant to look is with regular old ad. But turn it off and we get what the, just the effect is. I guess we're doing this backwards. So the effect, uh, I can go back here, yeah. So the effect uh, at the end is coming out through here and part of what's happening is this displacement. So right now, this is essentially like the sort of like glowy lightsaber effect that's happening and like it's, really high contrasted to that blue effect, try and isolate it out of everything else. And the, the stuff you can see on my hand is actually reflections from my monitor. What I just did there was move X split out of the window. It has bright enough blue values that it can show up in the thing and like it is in the mask when it does that. Um, and like adjusting for that is all about the color correction and stuff like that. But like this, this sort of trailer effect is frame blur. It's happening earlier on. <clears throat> but then this displacement idea uh, comes from the lava layer. That's this thing. So we'll get there in a bit. And it depends on how hard you want that effect to happen, but that's basically what's creating the flame effect is this displacement. So the way this works is that in this footage, uh, what's coming in the signal is just this other thing, this, this effect right here. And this is buffer five. And the way that buffers work is buffer blender is that you identify what you want to be a buffer. Like imagine each of these things are kind of effects you're putting in a mixer insert. And then that this is now a mixer insert. This is another mixer insert. And that's determined by when you turn on this two buffer icon. So these guys don't have two buffer icon on at all. And they're not therefore in the, that buffer system. But if I click this on, it would turn these three things. The first ones generated since the last buffer into a new buffer. And like this other buffer that is just here is this, this lava effect, which you, we can kind of see just the thumbnail of what it's doing. Um, I don't want to disable them because if I, when I do turn it off to actually show it, it'll, it'll screw up the buffer system, I think. Uh, but yeah, turn off the color correction. It gets a little bit darker. Turn off the bloom. Stops doing that particular effect. And then 
the other th oh yeah so the way the buffer blender works is that you set your input source to be one of the layers because you can have you can have many more layers and you can have access in here you can see one of the options is straight up the webcam and you add that in here we can add stuff and you drop it in here and then you when you go to have those options they'll show up in this list um and you pick your thing and then now there's an offset there's an offset of nine and this is like if you use superior drummer and set the multi-track outputs and you you set the outputs to be an offset of whatever answer you put the superior drummer in so in this case we pick the insert and now for us to access the buffers from there we do the offset until we find the ones we want in this case the very first offset because it told to go from g which this layer is g is the lava so buffer one and then displace with full on and then now it's displacing the image according to this other image and in this case, displacement can be thought of essentially, um, I, I really like to think of it as distortion, but it might actually be more like FM or RM. It's modulation regardless. And this is what's causing the sort of that, essentially the, the whole fire based effect. And when we actually look at what it looks like, that's not too surprising. Boop. This is just a canvas effect. Uh, if you go in this background list here, there's a lot of things that are very useful for this, for this exact thing. Like these sorts of patterny, noisy things that go on are used for this. And it's because they have a texture. And uh, texturing is just a big problem most of the time. Because like a thing being a thing and having the thing is one thing. But then having a reasonable amount of detail or behaving a kind of way, either you have an element that's real or you need to have a generated element. And this is a pretty common generated element right here. Um, and then... When it goes, I guess, yeah, I gotta rebuild the buffer. Uh, G, yeah, so then there's that element, and then it's it's applying its element to uh, this thing visually, and it's displacing it according to it. So, like, it has a color, but the color doesn't matter. Like, it's it's care, it cares about its lightness value. Um, red is a darker color, so it means it's lower impact. This is why it's totally white version, like, this is really high impact, and this one's slightly less impact, but the shape of the impact is the same. The color isn't super important so much as like the actual value of it, light-wise. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So after that, it's just about getting this color separated and set on just the drumstick. So uh, we don't need a lava anymore, or this, or that. And so here's over here uh, the naked effect with the frame blur. So a frame blur is just delay, essentially. Boop, without it. Look, there it is. It's just... Regular do the bop. Now, the whole reason I did that is because this thing is the thing that's being blood, like blooded up by the lava displacement, but it goes away when it goes away, and the frame blur leaves just a, this, this teensiest bit of tailage, which is kind of that like bursted flamed smoke effect that comes up because like the flame has a kind of a tail. Of course, this this jacky jampy looking thing, actually, to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure if that's how this would look. Because if you can see, this is running at 30 FPS. The recording is at 60. It doesn't matter if I set it to 60. It's not going to go that high. And if you, if I were to have recorded footage of me moving around in a stick, and then I recorded that and rendered that at 60 FPS, it probably would look way better than that. But um, because it creates this kind of external cloud, it gets it, it looks more like a fire effect as opposed to just a thing kind of warbling around. And that's that was the intention there. So then this here is the alpha key, which is a huge part of this so boop normally it's th this straight up just this uh uh solid color which is nothing right now oh it's because it's yeah so the way that i managed to get this to work is that it's masking everything but the blue and i got like you can see how this kind of red yellowish kind of crap going on and it's because if i wasn't doing this uh like yeah so here here's some more of the information that shows up in this image and essentially, we're trying to pick up the things that, that get rid of to isolate for what's left of the, the very process. And the reason why I looked that gross in the first place is because it, it, I'm, I tried to exaggerate the color profiles to more easily grasp the uniqueness of this particularly like blue element. Ideally, I, I mean, I, I taped this thing blue because I was trying to find a color that wouldn't be anywhere else in the room. And it's pretty easy because I don't have a lot of colors anywhere, but that ended up being like, a lot more like, oh, there's actually some serious color noise everywhere, isn't there? And it gets a little hard. Uh, but let's get rid of this and look at the boop. Yeah. So I'm using the color correction to essentially edit the image now. 
So here's the first actual step. And before you see there's a whole other layer though, what's going on and why aren't I just doing out like this? And it's because I've detected some weird behavior and how it's interpreting my camera. I think it has something to do with the Brio's like aspect ratio that I can't change like this right now. But uh, moral of the story is, is that sometimes it comes out in a stretch and sometimes it doesn't, and it kind of can't do that. It has to be lined up all the time. So I put it into one in instrument input. I just called it that, and that's essentially what it is. This is we're, this is essentially a device input as though you were plugging it into like a, an audio input into a mixer insert. And a lot like that, it usually works better if you just have one dedicated input that you then serve to other stuff. And that's what's going on. This is just the end. It's in there now. And uh, the first thing it's doing is I put it into a buffer, and then this buffer is going to another one, just a whole other one, explicitly, so that I can screw with it to do this to it. So what this is, uh, the whole the, like the doing the doing here, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a new one so we can show you. But that messing with this one. Boop boop. It's in post process color correction. Gah. That's blur. <laughs> color correction is a bit. It's basically equalizing and and mastering. And what I did there was I compressed the crap out of it to attempt to more easily isolate certain things I was going to phase cancel. So you do that, contrast all the way up. And now you see how just, just laser blue this is now? And like there's yellow, red, and black like in the background. And that's just, that should be pretty easy to isolate and separate. Like that's the thought here. And the idea, ideally, because we have this other, the alpha key, which allows you to do that by color. Like that's the thought. And so then it's just about like cajoling it into its best possible self. And it's not always about, uh, like, yeah, so like, so like this one might, this might have actually been a little bit of a better choice than I think about it. Uh, but yeah, so that's the art of this element right here, this kind of work is trying to figure out the right amount of like separated color so that when you feed it into something to be a mask, because now this is essentially, we this is like, you can think of this as like a ghost click. This is the thing that we don't hear, but we see the effect of. And in this case, I did. Like, this is kind of like a little purpley sheen kind of worked out for it for my benefit though um yeah and then this got put into a layer uh this is going this is just a background the black color so that like, what would be like because the way the masks work is that white is let through and black is not and we want to then set uh through our deal in this case this guy yeah we are saying it's masking everything but this color, so then it's letting the black through on those other colors, on the, the bright yellow and red and the black and white. Um, now, so all of those colors are letting black through, and only this is showing the blue, and that's enough. I mean, actually, this is just the thing that gets processed the rest of the way, but if I were to turn this into a rest, an actual, like, masky mask, uh, what this would do is it would allow me to um, say that like, this is just this is what the stick is in the present. I actually am not using the masking at all. I actually just am just processing it to get rid of everything until this is the only thing visible and then I just do something with it. Yep, and then it's blurred and then that goes into a layer. And then here's the lava and that's just there to go to a layer. And then the blur and the layer, or the lava are blent, blent together. We got picket layer G and then it's already set up there, but I would like there's bottom layer and top layer and the order of how you combine them matters. This is much like regular audio processing in that regard. And then like how well that like with your, your type of movement, but then the, the the actual displacement set is like different from that. Um, one interesting thing though about this, if I do the blend alpha like this right now, it does nothing because both layers are the same and it's also set to the normal value. What this means though is that if I did have it on, I hit zoom, it would zoom the actual whole image like that. But if I don't, if I'm only showing essentially the bottom layer and I do the zoom, it's actually just zooming the displacement effect. And that's important because sometimes you might do this displacement thing and discover that like it actually moved it way too far in a direction, but in a way that some parts of it were really cool and you wanted to do that, but other parts of it were a disaster. And that's one of the ways you can fix it. Uh, after this is some bloom to get that late effect. And this is the beginning of some parts that get difficult with some things in Zeeg that I haven't quite figured out yet, which is just how it translates certain effects in certain times because... This is supposed to like necessarily make it darker, I guess, but like, yeah, in a certain way it's blunt up, and then here's the color correction to kind of bring it back up again. So like, this is this is me having done a thing that made it a bit weird, and then I had to like saturate it again to make it like audible and cool. Not unlike doing neuro sound design, that's sort of had this end up, end up coming out again. And then now we got to do the actual blending and do the thing. But notice I didn't put it into a layer, but we're using another buffer blender. And that's because on the bottom layer, I set the setting to pass through, 
which is accepting input based on the previous input. So just whatever's happening is going in there. And now I gotta find, uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, I still gotta pick a layer though because that's how it tells it where, yeah, there's it being weird, you see that just being there? Yeah, but this is the correct ratio. And now it's on the thing again. Yay, burning stick, burning everything, I guess. Yeah, and because that's the thing on top, it's gonna zoom all the way. I, is there anything worth displacing? Oh yeah, so here's what this would look like if I were displacing everything by the lava. Like this is the whole full, full force lava. It's like I'm in that bit in Lord of the Rings, right? And uh, what, what else can I do this by? Let's see, three is just me, right? Yeah, this is displacing it by the room, it doesn't work. Um, there's no buffer one though. Oh yeah, because I don't have, because it's passed through. Whoa, whoa town. <laughs> Yeah, because it's passed through, um, I don't get access to that particular what oh hey, this is the mask. Okay, this is cool. So this this is the one that's just the regular mask. Uh with the frame blur, I guess, because I it's seeing you see how the trailing effect is still doing the, the displacement on the thing. This is a, this is one big reason why I like putting frame blur on things that end up being like effects like mask effects. I call these things mask effects. I'm being technical, that's all I know I'm talking about. Like the um, displacement effect here is using the the frame the, the delayed effect as its source input as opposed to just the regular input, and this is the result is that it does that kind of like ha 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 kind of thing. So that's um that's one of the benefits of doing that. I wonder what that looks like in the color dodge mode. Do 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 do. do. Whoa, whoa. Also whoa. Ooh, I had a pleasant glow. So not unlike regular sound design, this is kind of how you figure out how you do cool stuff. You just figure these out, you figure out the limitations, and then you put in, oh my gosh. And then you put in the actual like application of it and what it is good for. Lighten is also another fun mode that seems to work out pretty well. It actually looks very clean. Like, I actually kind of dig that a lot. I have created some kind of weird invisible drumstick. Isn't that neat? So... You might be wondering to yourself what the hell possible application there is. And, like, I'm actually just already planning on doing a thing where um, the you just have an effect like this, and then there's a song going, and you use the spectral input bounce effects on the effect. So, like, imagine I'm holding the stick, and, like, the drum kicks hit, and there's a kick, 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 snare, kick, snare. But I'm moving it around, and it's like, that's, that's tracking. That's something different. That might not be possible. But um, versions of that effect are. Uh... Darken, that's fun. Color dodge, here it is. Woo, that is cool. Yeah. Anyway, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all of that fun stuff. Oh, this is what it looks like without without the burn. So this is just the mask and just the displacement. Actually, this is just the regular footage and displacement. Um, this is being displaced by the mask. This is just the naked footage without any adjustment other than the fact that the mask is displacing it. And that's the effect that it has. It essentially made this invisible. This is an invisibility effect. Honestly, that's exactly how you do that. Like, we <laughs> A little bit better, cleaner if you have a better mask and whatnot. But this is pretty awesome for a live effect. You gotta remember that. Uh, yeah, and then this is just a regular doofer. So let's, let's go back to... Fire. Oh, that's right, I was doing. I'm like, where, where did it all go? There you go, I like that. I'm getting distracted. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And as usual, have it. Whoa, I don't upside down. Have a nice day, though. Woo!